Hi, welcome back to the SQL Server 2016 administration series. I'm Steve Jones, and this is the section on execution plans in the query store. In this section, we'll start by talking about execution plans. We'll look at how they're used in SQL Server and what they actually mean, how we can save them. And then we'll talk in a little more detail about how we can read execution plans and use those to improve the performance of our database server. Next, we'll talk about the query store, which is a brand new feature in SQL Server 2016. We'll look at an overview, and then we'll go into more depth on how we administer the query store. In this video, this is an introduction to execution plans. In this video, we're going to cover the explanation of what an execution plan actually is, talk about how SQL Server actually creates and uses these plans, and then we'll look in a demo how we can save and view the execution plan data. Every query that's submitted to SQL Server is just a code that is sent from your client application. This could be a select query, an insert query. It could be the DDL to create a table or create a user from Management Studio. It doesn't matter what it is. Every query is, submit is submitted, and SQL Server has to analyze this code and determine if it's correctly structured and then how they would run it. There's a parser that determines if it's syntactically correct. But then there's a query optimizer that actually generates a plan. And it does this by compiling the code into an actual set of steps that will be executed. This is very similar to how C Sharp code might be compiled into an assembly or an executable or Java code compiled into a byte file. It's the same type of process, except this takes place completely inside the SQL Server platform. And the output is kept inside SQL Server, and it's actually the execution plan that is stored there. The execution plan that SQL Server produces is actually the set of steps that will take place and how we'll gather the data, assemble it, create the object, whatever it is. Now inside Management Studio and the Query Store, Estimated plans are stored, which is an estimate of how a query will actually run. But once the query runs, additional information is actually gathered and put into what we call an actual execution plan that contains all this other information about what actually happened when the plan was executed. Now we can look at the data for execution plan in different formats. We have a graphical format in Management Studio. We can also get an XML format, or there's a text format that we can use. All the information is roughly the same in all these formats. Text plan is perhaps a little bit less because the XML contains additional data that's visible and the visual plan is an interpretation of the XML. Now we'll look at how we can see these in Management Studio, how we can save these and actually reopen them in Management Studio or send them to a colleague that can open them in their Management Studio. The rendering in Management Studio is fairly rudimentary. Plan Explorer, which is a free product from Century One, provides a much, much better view of execution plans and I would encourage you to use the Plan Explorer tool. So let's take a look at a demo of how we would actually use and view execution plans. Here I am in Management Studio, and you can see that I have a query here. It's a fairly simple query that joins two tables, and if I execute this, I get a result set. That's not what's really important here. What we want to do is look at an execution plan. So in this case, I'm going to start by showing you a text plan. So I'm going to set the show plan text on. We'll execute that. And now we'll execute our query. This is the same query we just ran. Now you'll notice in this case, I don't get the results that I expect, but instead I get the statement text, which is the same text that's up here at the top. And then I get a plan here at the bottom that talks about how this will be executed. In this case, there'll be two clustered index scans, which will take place first. A merge join will connect those two scans into a result. And then this top expression, which was at the very beginning of my code, will be applied to that result set. Again, this is a fairly rudimentary way of looking at a plan. Let's look at a better way. Now here I have a much more complex query. If we look at this, I've got a CTE up here that joins a number of tables. And then down here, we join back the results of that in a recursive fashion. Now again, if I execute this, I get some kind of result. Well, let's stop for a minute. You'll notice I have this button at the top of Management Studio that says Display Estimated Execution Plan. Now, if I click that, what happens is I get this execution plan at the bottom and I get a graphical view of things. Let's make this a little bit larger so we can see. You can see here's my select. There's a sort operator here, which is actually going to take place at the bottom of my query, which is this order by operation. So we're going to sort this input. And if you look at the bottom of the pop-up, you'll see sorting by some values that are there. Okay, we've got values that were returned and there's both ascending values. And so the operation of the query kind of works in this fashion from left to right. Data actually flows from right to left. So this clustered index seek and this index seek and these index seeks are the first operations that take place. And these arrows provide me with a view of what's happening. 
And if I hover over them, you can see there's an estimated number of rows and data that are going to be moved. So these two tables will actually go into a nested loop join. From there, I estimate one row comes out. This compute scaler, when I look at this, is actually a value that's going to convert some of my data that's in my query. And so all of this information is used by SQL Server to actually execute that query. It looks like quite a bit of information, but this is actually not too bad of a plan. There are much worse plans. And so by looking at this, I can see how SQL Server will actually execute my query. Now, if you'll notice when I look at this, there's a physical operation and a logical operation in the pop-up, and then a bunch of estimates, right? There's a mode, there's cost, there's IO cost, et cetera. These are all estimates based on the data distribution and statistics that exist in the table. These aren't the actual plan, but let's look at the actual plan. Now up here there was the estimated plan. If I come over here, you'll see there's an actually, there's an include execution plan button that I can click. And if I click this and execute my query, I get a third tab at the bottom of my results. And that's my actual execution plan. Now it looks very similar to the estimated plan and it's rare that anything in here would change substantially. The one difference is that what could happen is the actual number of rows and actual number of operations could be different. And so if you look now, in addition to a physical and logical operation, I have actual and estimated modes. I have actual and estimated costs and actual and estimated rows. And by looking here, I can see what has actually happened in my query. Now this is all XML data, and we can easily see that if we were to set XML, the show plan XML on. So let's do that. I'm going to come back to my first plan and do that so I don't clutter up my execution plan in the other window. I want to set it off. When I execute this now, I get an XML plan instead. So I can see the XML by right clicking and show the execution plan XML. And if I click that, what I'll do is I'll get an XML document that includes all the information that was in that visual plan, but it's organized in an XML document. So in this case, here was that order by operation that was in the side the sort. You can see that ascending by this column and this column here, this expression, I have the other information here. What was the output list and the various columns that were used? Here's my compute scaler. And if I scroll down, eventually what I'll find is that I've got index seeks down somewhere at the bottom here. And these are the operations that took place that actually executed in the plan. So here's my seek predicates. There's the seek keys. In this case, the business entity ID was the column that was seeked. And the operators we can see in various information. I can see the XML in that sense. When I right clicked here, I had this other option to save the execution plan. So let's do a save as. In this case, let's call it packed and we'll save that plan. Now, if I wanted to send this to a colleague, they could get download that .sql plan file. And they could actually open it. And so in this case, if I say open, I'll pick this packed plan. I say open. And what I do is I get that in a new tab and I get that same plan that I had before. And if I look here, we'll see the actuals in here as well. So if I were to go over and look here, estimated that the actual number of rows would be zero, and indeed there were zero there, same thing here. By putting all this information together, we can start to analyze how SQL Server works. These execution plans are very, very valuable, and so you should be comfortable with producing an execution plan and also sending it to colleagues.